I've known about it, I've heard about it through the grapevine and it's up in the Alaska interior and there's no uh, accommodations there unless you know someone. We got the invite through the network of mutual friends that are fishing junkies more or less. A lot of grass, a lot of marshy, weird, you know, channels, a lot of brush, willows, and just like uh, the bayou. It was like, it felt like I was in the bayou in the Alaska interior. <laughs> You're cruising around in a, in a power boat and there's grass everywhere. You get lost easily. Is this up here? Is this a big cove thing up here? Uh, yeah, I think so. Luckily, we were with Ray, our buddy. <laughs> Grew up running amok there on power boats, so there wasn't anywhere that he couldn't figure his way out of and get back to safety. It's just a, basically, it's an off the beaten path, great place to go pike fishing. Woo! You can catch 40, 50 inch pike out of there. You know, lots of smaller fish, but odds of getting 40 plus inch pike are really good there. I always wanted to have a tackle shop just because I've been fishing ever since I was a kid. Been making my own lures my whole life. And uh, it was always in the back of my mind, but the planets hadn't aligned properly to where it made sense. So then when I came to Alaska in 97, I had my little lure box that I always make my lures with, I travel with, you know, and uh, I was making my fishing lures and got to be where everybody was wanting to use my lures. It just made sense to, uh, Start a business in Alaska. We're in a huge uh, fishing, sport fishing community up here. Everywhere you go, there, there's fishing, and that's where the light bulb kind of clicked in my head. Where it was, I'm in a great spot to do this. If I'm going to start a fish and lure business, this is the place to do it. So yeah, once I came up here, I ended up moving down to Kodiak and working at a salmon hatchery on Fognac Island down there. That was where it all kind of came into place and it all made sense. What we do here is raise salmon for the sport fishing and commercial industry. We fertilize their eggs here and then we basically uh, give them a head start on life and boot them out in the wild on their own. And, they go out and do their own thing in the ocean and come back as adults and we uh, repeat the cycle, take the eggs and do it all over again. This is where I started my business, Kodiak Custom Fish and Tackle. And my real passion is out there in the ocean where fishing is my business and business is good. Ah! <laughs> oh, yeah. Gnarly looking fish. It's gonna make some good tacos right there. Ah! Don't try this at home, kids. I'm Tony Davis. Look at that toad! <laughs> I've been living here at this particular salmon hatchery in remote Alaska for 11 years now. Yeah, I started making fishing lures when I was about 10. I was fishing with my dad and, and uh, you know, he couldn't afford to buy these lures, so he said basically, you know, look jerky, you're gonna learn how to make lures or you're not gonna be fishing. So I started making lures real young and just wanted to make the best lure that was available, so, you know, that's kind of how I got started with that. We started uh, fishing in the Prince William Sound. We were bottom fishing and playing around with what worked best for us anyway. And we were catching uh, halibut and lingcod and smaller rockfish. And we were trying to come up with a lure that caught everything, whether it was big or small. And so we had to come up with a good attractant, which is we found out that this squid with a glow underside worked really well. And then we got a trailer hook. We got an 11-aught main hook with a 9-aught trailer hook on a titanium leader. So that stinger is a little small stinger hook. That hammers the little fish that come up and nibble on the edge of the lure. Halibut, that's probably the most, uh, one of the fish that put Alaska on the map for sure. Everybody wants to come up and catch a big halibut. Oh yeah. The biggest halibut I caught was, would have broken the IGFA world record if I wouldn't have uh, broken every rule in their book. 
and we we're actually just testing out these new lures. It was this one right here, the Blue Glow. It was 420 pounds. It was just under eight feet long. It was uh, 90, just a, it was about 92 inches long. It was a beast. The thing was a monster. We pretty much did everything wrong according to them, but it was a matter of survival and I wouldn't do it any other way. Safety first. Nice black rockfish. It's gonna make some good tacos right there. Great cod. It's the chip in Seattle. That's right. All you can eat, $4.99. Punk rock quill back right there. Quill back rockfish. Pretty cool. That is imitation crab meat right there. That one's hooked. Bam! There it is, yellow eye, big one. Look at this sucker. 37 pounder. Look at that toad! <laughs> yellow eye rockfish live to be, uh, you know, they can live up to 100, 110 years old. But they sure are good on the frying pan. Booyah. Oof. That is a heavy yellow eye. Cold and wet, my hands and my feet, and my face, neck, chest, breast, and head hurts. I'm out of here. Famous Davis representing Kodiak Custom. Fish out, homies. When I was a little kid, my dad uh, taught me how to make spinners because we were fishing for salmon and steelhead in the rivers and uh, he didn't want to buy spinners so he said if I was going to be fishing I'm going to learn, have to learn how to make them so I've been force fed spinner fishing most of my life and I uh, always wanted to be the best spinner fisherman this world had to offer and so I've always been screwing around trying to make a lure that caught more fish than anything else out there so I've, I've had to uh, do a little, little groundwork, put in a lot of time and I found that uh, you know, different different fish species are going to be hitting different color lures. Like for example, the salmon, the silvers, when the silvers come in, they're going to be hitting loud, obnoxious colors. You know, look at this orange, blaze orange, flame pinks, things like that that are, that are uh, just aggravating. It doesn't necessarily have to look like anything that's natural out there to them. They come up, they come into, into the fresh water to spawn and uh, they don't want to be bothered, so anything that's kind of in their way is uh, going to aggravate them, and they, they'll nail it. You know, if you're looking for uh, for for like trout fishing or something, or steelhead or something that's uh, you know you're catching a fish that's still feeding, you're going to want it to look a little more natural. So you want to use something that's smaller, or you know, the color of something that they're eating. And chums, for example, they live off of uh, you know purple jellyfish is their primary feed source out in the ocean. And, they're used to seeing that purple. So, you know, a purple color actually when, when you're talking about chum fishing is gonna be the hot lure to use. What are we doing out here, Tony? Fueling up, man, fueling up the birds. We're gonna go put the smack down on these pike out here. Top secret pond. Last outdoors television coming at you live. Yeah, move them out. I've known about it, I've heard about it through the grapevine that's up in the Alaska interior. A lot of grass, a lot of marshy, weird, you know, channels, a lot of brush, willows, and just like, uh, felt like I was in the bayou in the Alaska interior. cruising around in a, in a power boat and there's grass everywhere. You get lost easily. Luckily, we were with Ray, our buddy that grew up running the muck there on power boats. So there wasn't anywhere that he couldn't figure his way out of and get back to safety. We got the invite through a network of mutual friends that are fishing junkies, more or less. There's no uh, accommodations there unless you know someone. 
It's just a, basically, it's an off the beaten path, great place to go pike fishing. Look, there you go. Oh, yeah. You can catch 40, 50 inch pike out of there. Yeah. You know, lots of smaller yeah. fish, sure, but nice fish, odds of getting 40 plus inch coast. pike are really good there. <laughs> Nice thing about this little pike fishing treat we got, Alaska isn't always all, all about the salmon. We're up here in the far north interior, looking for some monster pike, having a blast. Not a saltwater fish in sight for miles. Oh, wait for it. Well, looky here, kids. We got another little she, she fish replica spinner here. We're gonna give it a shot. That's another huge reason we went up there because it's really good pike fishing. It's right in our backyard, but the, the the whole Midwest. I mean, those guys are up there hammering pike, musky, bass, all that same kind of stuff, and they're using big spinners down there, big, huge, just gnarly, big, nasty spinners to catch their pike and musky with, and we make our skirt spinner. Uh, uh, works really good up here on our salmon and all kinds of other stuff that we use them for. But I, you know, yeah, we wanted to uh, compare notes with the Midwest guys, see what our spinners will do, and uh, hopefully get our spinners down there in their neck of the woods and kind of get into that market down there and try to do some uh, pike fishing in the Midwest with Kodiak Custom Fishing Tackle. And now there's going to be a dark blue Kodiak Custom number six. A gray she fish. That's right. <laughs> Works really good on king salmon. Let's see if the pike like it. I like it. That's all. That's half the battle, right? As long as I like it. Yeah. That's, that's the Prince Port Park. Here we go. Activity along along these little oh, riverbanks. My that goodness! All down, you can There's tell. A big beaver hut right there. So, yeah, that's a beaver lodge. Look at how high up that sucker goes. We might have to go take a look at that. Oh, one just surfaced right over there. Yeah, beaver. There look at all these trees that they've already chewed down and stripped the bark. Oh, wow, that's a lot of birch is already like peeled. Look at this guy. <laughs> Woo! Need a net? Yeah. The weather out there is usually really good. Hot, sunny, clear. We've learned that the best conditions to fish for pike is the worst conditions for a human. So <laughs> you want it to be miserably hot, flat, calm, sun right on top of the water, and uh, you know, and that's what you want to be out in catching pike. It's when the big guys are going to come out, and you know they're going to be more aggressive. The weather played a huge factor in our, our little curveball we got thrown. It was windy the whole time we were there. <laughs> High winds. And then it got cloudy and started raining. And these guys, they didn't even want to fish because they spent so much time out there. That, and I couldn't take it. Finally, after you know we sat there and watched it rain for two days and the wind still never quit blowing even in the rain, I'm like, let's go. We'll go find a slough or a mud puddle in the forest to throw a lure in. I don't care. I'm going fishing. <laughs> so we, we went out and braved the weather, you know. And it was, and we still managed to find some fish. So it was good. We had a we had a great time. It was fun. The cards are stacked against us right now. It's raining. It's horrible. It's nasty. But we're still on the board. Oh yeah. Voracious savages. These pike. They'll eat anything. Boy, they're. Just ridiculously brutal. Look at the camouflage on these. These things are built for ambush. 
and they are voracious predators. They'll eat anything that comes around. They're camouflaged well. They hide in the grass and in the weeds. And then they ah, attack. Let's let go. There used to be a run of salmon all the way up here. There used to be runs of salmon all the way up the tree. No yeah. kidding. Not anymore. Wow. And the pike showed up, huh? It's pretty hard for pike to, or uh, anything to grow where pike live, that's for sure. They do a pretty good job at eliminating everything. Pike are really known for that. That's why anytime I hear people like, oh, we need to get some pike in here, I'm like, no. Bad no, idea. No, it's a bad idea. If they don't belong here, don't bring them here. Like having really smart sharks in the ocean. Normally, we're looking to let these go, but today, we're gonna take this thing home and we're gonna try to cook it on the can cooker. We're gonna do a fried pike and a can cooker at camp here. So this guy's gonna have to take one for the team and it's coming home with us. Nine pounds. Yeah, nine. Okay. All right, that's a good one, Kristen. Beat up. Look at this uh, scar here. He got chewed on by another one, probably. Yeah, probably so. Okay, what you got? Nice, nice fish there. <laughs> Look at those teeth in there. Okay. Well, one of the neat new fun things we do is we have our own packaging machine and set up here now also. And it makes for a real nice professional look. It's a lot of fun seeing your stuff in the store, yeah, especially when, uh, yeah, you got people walking up and don't know who we are. You know, we'll be standing there looking at stuff or working on stuff. They don't even know we're, we're actually organizing our display. They just think we're a customer in there ransacking the tackle. but. People come up and they start ranting and raving about how good that lure works, or you got other people coming up and talking about how good that Kodiak Custom lure is. And yeah, makes your head swell, makes you feel pretty good about what you're doing, and cannot tell a lie. Yeah, it uh, kind of helps fuel the fire a little bit. And then people are sending photos, sending us photos of fish they catch, and it's just the whole thing. It's just, it's, uh, it's just, a, it's a lot of fun. It's very, very rewarding, and yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, don't think I could be in a better place to, to do this. Cool. Perfect. All right, we're gonna get five fillets off these guys. I have Y bones everywhere on them. So we're gonna try to dodge the Y bone bullet. The bone thing you hear about pike, the Y bones, is uh, easy to avoid. You know, there's a million videos online. There's five fillets on a pike. You know, you start on the top, you take the ridge, the top of the, the back, and basically uh, it's like a back strap almost when you get it off. There's one fillet. Okay, got under that first set of Y bones. Now I'm about ready to run into another one. We're gonna go straight down from here. Try to dodge those bullets. There's another one right back here, a little smaller. You go right behind that setup, Y bones. You got a little tail section here. It's pretty easy to yeah to flay them. Just five fillets on a pike, and you just gotta kind of work your way around the. Once you figure out how that Y bone thing works, it's pretty easy. Five pike fillets. 
Get on the hatch. Oh yeah. The pike that we cooked was ridiculously awesome. It far and away exceeded my expectations. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking this fish is out in a hot, shallow lake, you know, up in the interior. It's probably gonna be a muddy, you know, soft, mushy. I was I was expecting to see worms, parasites in the in the flesh on them even. Because <laughs> when you come up over the mountain, you see this big lake and it's never gets dark. It's shallow. You're thinking warm water, wormy fish. <laughs> and we got these pike, busted out the can cooker with some oil, and we deep fried these babies up. I, it was as good or better than just fresh halibut or lean cod in the salt water. It was ridiculous. Wow. Excellent. Everybody loved it. We just, we figured, well, we'll keep a few of them, try them out, and man, it was, uh, we got a lot of pike fans out of this trip, because most of the time, everybody lets them go. Even the guys that live there, they don't even mess with them, so. They were, uh, they were even hogging down on it and really liked it, so. Woohoo! <laughs>